Okay, this is my third time, I think, to try and explain this filter that I created in motion. First of all, I call this Sharpen Tools. It does way more than just Sharpen. And it's based on a Photoshop trick, and it doesn't actually use any sharpening filters available in Motion or Final Cut. How it works is it takes the video, splits it into three layers. For the middle layer, there's a blur a filter applied that's minimized, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I desaturate it to uh, a black and white image. I put a high pass on it. And for those of you who recognize this Photoshop trick, this is a, how we sharpen without sharpen filters in Photoshop. And then I provide access to the gamma controls of the color elements, the RGB color elements plus the overall RGB gamma control. And on the top layer, I provide uh, a huge blur that it gets overlaid on the final image. When they're recomposited back together, you get all of these effects. You can color control the overall image. You can sharpen edges. Uh, you can actually go from a very modest effect and color correction to extreme effects. Such as, you can do some cartooning type effects, like this, by using hard mix and the various color controllers. And actually, you can just do all kinds of really interesting things with the video. Uh, you can make it look abstract, or you can make it look hyper real, if that's a term. So you see on the right side, that's the original video. And on the left side is uh, the filters are applied. And I'm guessing that's on this one. In some video, you can apply the filter more than once and use different blend modes. For this one, I used uh, a linear dodge and a vivid light with different settings to create this very nighttime kind of looking thing. And if you look at the original video, you know, it's, I mean, it's pretty good, but It's a little bit more light in it than I w would want for that. And in this one, it just looks like even the shadows are saturated. Uh, so, I mean, it's personal taste. In this example, I use the filter to clean up the green screen somewhat. I mean, I still need a garbage mat here, but this is 480 video on 1080 in the background. So it's not too bad. And it's quick. And go back to this clip here. and show the vector scopes. And I think I want which one do I want? This one. And you have a red controller here. 
a green controller here and a blue controller here. Let me take down the uh, sharpening. Actually, for this mode, let's do something like this. And you do some pretty quick color correction. There's just quite a bit built into this filter. Most of it was a little bit of an accident, but it turned out to be so cool. So let me go over this. Um, the default state has actually quite a lot of sharpening put in by default. Um, on this clip it works well, but let's try another clip and I can click on this backward arrow to get it back to the default state. You can see that the default is actually quite severe. Uh, these four controls here, the effect radius, the value, saturate, and soften, they are the sharpening uh, components. The top two, uh, radius and value, um, they work in tandem with each other. They work to kind of cross-fade the effect with each other. So if the value is zero and you crank up the radius, you don't really get very much effect at all. The minimum radius on this is always going to be one. There's no zero. I mean, you just, you can't shut it off. But you can't really tell that anything is going on with the effect radius of zero, even if you got the value cranked all the way up. So you need to have some amount of radius in this control and some amount of value. So if I move the value up and move the radius up, you can see what kind of effect you have. And if I move the value down, you can see that it is a mitigating factor for the control of this. And you can use the soften control to mitigate any noise that might appear. However, soften is a general blur and it will soften the lines that uh, the edge definition that you're trying to achieve. So, um, you can use this saturate control in tandem with the soften control to try and uh, reduce any uh, noise that might appear in the what should be smoother areas of the video or you may end up having to back off um, when you're sharpening sometimes less is more and this section down here uh, allows you to create a better dynamic range in the image, which also aids in sharpening. But with these three controls at the bottom, you can also create color looks very easily by just manipulating the red, green, and blue sliders. Now they're labeled cyan to red cast. If the image is too red, you can move towards the cyan side to pull reds out to yellow. Something like that. These are very easy color controls to use, uh, considerably a lot easier than the uh, color correction tools that are in Final Cut Pro 10.
They can be keyframed. Let's take a look at the original. It's kind of uh, washed out overall and sharpened with the sharpen tools. And even if you take the sharpening out like this, just the color corrections can make a world of difference to make the image look sharper. Uh, this saturate control a lot of times will have uh, in the high ranges will cast kind of an aura effect. So if you keep those kinds of things in mind when you're using these various controls in this tool, uh, then you have you know, a good direction to start from. See how easy it is to change all of this? So there you have it. It's an old, old Photoshop technique for improving image quality, a little bit of sharpening without actual sharpening, and um, color correction or color manipulation. I hope you find it useful.